Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This video is gonna be about these baskets that I picked up at Ikea. Now, I live nowhere near an Ikea. The nearest one is like five, six hours away. But for one of the hurricanes we had this year, I don't even remember because we had so many, we evacuated to a place that was near an Ikea. So of course it has to go. Pro tip, if you have to evacuate, evacuate near Ikea. So I do have a video of that. It's called Cajuns Go to Ikea, where you see me and my kids go through Ikea for the first time. It was both a nightmare and fun at the same time. Anyway, I picked up four of these baskets and I love the idea of them. Like I like the floppiness, I like the shape of them, but they're a little bit too new looking for me. And I have, like I looked at some ideas and everything was very like boho or modern and I'm a little more like vintage farmhouse, antique looking. So I have four different ideas and luckily I have four baskets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make over these in more of a farmhouse style and then I'm gonna style each one the way I envisioned in my head. So this should be like a really quick, simple DIY that anybody can do. And if you live near Ikea, hopefully you can buy these baskets. And I haven't seen them anywhere around here except for the boutiques where they priced are like $40, $50. It's crazy. So I think these were $10 and I'm probably gonna sell them for about 25. So I feel, still feel like somebody's getting a great deal. They are definitely a very nice size and I have so many ideas for them. I wanna give these baskets like an aged brown effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix my Waverly antiquing wax with some water. I just keep it in like a little Tupperware container. I keep it mixed up because I use this stuff all the time. And what that's gonna do is just give it like this aged effect. So let me show y'all. Here, got my brush and all I do, let me move this all out of the way, is you just brush it on. Now it's, it's mixed with water, so it is gonna be watery. And sometimes what I do, if I feel like it's not getting brown enough, is I'll dip it in the mixture, like in the, I mean, sorry, in the brown wax and then also brush it on. But I find having it wet just gives it, gives you so much more control. Like if you just put the paint on, then once it's on there, it's a little bit more difficult to get it off and to control it. So I prefer to water it down. And then also it gives you like an uneven effect which you know is what happens when something is nice and antique so i'm gonna do two baskets using this technique and one of them i'm gonna leave as is and the other one i'm gonna add more stuff to it If you want the edges to be more brown, what you do is you dip your brush in and you just kind of put it just on the edges. Sometimes I do that to make it even look more antique because those edges are usually darker. So that's all you gotta do to make that happen. And that's what I'm, I'm talking about. Like the great thing about the water is it kind of you can kind of um, switch it up a little bit easier. Like if I felt like this was too dark, all I had to do was dip it in my water and go back over it and it kind of smooths everything out. So if you're using antiquing wax for the first time, just keep some water handy. That definitely helps to uh, smooth out, you know, any mistakes that you might make. So the bottom I want to be like a little bit darker and then the top's gonna be a little bit darker. You just play around with it. It's like artwork. I probably will do the inside a little bit, but look, it's gonna dry lighter, but that's already looking so much better. All right, I should have did the antiquing one last because now my hands look awful. So it's made to, oh look, it's everywhere. It's made to get in the, the cracks and it does the same thing with your hands. So it gets them extra yucky. And yes, I wear all my rings 
while I'm working because my husband bought them for me to wear and that's why they have insurance on them. So I very rarely take them off. Um, so it's almost Christmas time. So this next one, we have to go Christmassy. Now I got this from my local hardware store. I didn't feel like driving all the way to Walmart, but if I could have picked out the, the spray paint I wanted, I would have gotten a like color like this in a matte Rust-Oleum. So I'm hoping this is the color that it is because I don't want like a bright red. And I think this is a gloss, but we're just gonna go with it. I didn't feel like driving all the way. I didn't feel like driving all the way to Walmart. Everything's far away from me. So we're gonna work with what we got. I got this from a local hardware store. Can't remember if I said that. Um, and you could also paint, but when you're working with baskets, like spray paint's the way to go rather than a brush. All right, let's see what this looks like. Ugh, that's kind of bright. I might put like the antiquing wax over it after this to tone it down. Now I do have another step plan for this. It's not just gonna be red, but I definitely wanted a darker red. I don't know, we'll see how it draws. So for the last basket, I want it to be like the perfect basket for a little vintage girl's room, just like my daughter's room. And I don't know if y'all watched on one of my Thrift to Treasure videos, I had this chest and I did like blue and pink and then came over with white. And I just love the way how um, that turned out. So we're gonna kind of do something almost exactly like that, except on this basket. And I'm using this beautiful blue that is actually on my daughter's ceiling in her room and then this pink so i got my chip brushes and what we're gonna do let me bring y'all down so y'all can see is i'm going to randomly just paint some blue and pink on in different places oh my god this blue is so pretty try not to think about it too much it's actually like way harder being random <laughs> than it is being intentional so for sure, like on the edges and on the corners, that's where you're going to be distressing back. This is going to be another basket that's going to be like, have different steps to it. So this is going to be the first step is just to put some blues and stuff down. So you can do this in almost any color. Like say you wanted some black, then you would just put black or, you know, whatever color. A little boys room, some navy would be cute. One of the baskets, I'm going to keep just the antique brown, but the rest of them, I'm gonna go over with a coat of white chalk paint and my paint sprayer. So I wanted to take a minute just to talk about my paint sprayer because I get so many questions about it. And y'all just excuse the mess. We are in my workshop, which I actually work in every day. So it's never gonna be like this beautiful background. It's gonna be wood and sawdust and stuff everywhere because I do work in here. So anyway, this is just a cheap, paint sprayer from Harbor Freight. I paid $20 for it. No, I never clean it. And I can't even remember when I bought this one. I just figured for 20 bucks, I would just use it till it didn't work anymore. And then if I needed to replace it, I will replace it. It's not worth my time to clean it every day. What I do is before I use it, I just clean the tip off because the paint will dry up in there. And I just leave the same color chalk paint in here all the time. Um, the last time, I got one of the zero gravity ones and I really like those and I might get another one like that. The reason I went with this one is because you can sit it flat and the zero gravity one, like it was just awkward. Like you had to find, like I had to make a special thing to put it in cause it doesn't just sit flat. But the thing I liked about it is that you didn't need a lot of spray paint. Like you could go to the very end and keep spraying you didn't need a lot of paint you could keep spraying because it was zero gravity whereas this one 
like I need to keep about this much paint in it for it to work really well. So I think this one's kind of like seen better days. So, and actually the zero gravity ones are cheaper. They're like 14 bucks. So I might be getting a different one soon. Now the chalk paint I keep in it. I get the Rust-Oleum chalk paint because I can get it in the court. And I don't like a bright white. So what I do is I get a few whites and then an off white. And then I mix them all together in a gallon. So I'll have like a gallon to be able to fill my paint up as needed. Now, just like everything else, the off-white has been hard to find. So what I've been doing is adding this, it's called Beachcomber Beige from Walmart. I've been adding this into my white if I don't have the off-white. And that just kind of calms down that bright whiteness to give it like a more a warm, a warm white. <laughs> so I hope I answered all y'all questions about a paint sprayer. Oh, also, I never thought about this, but somebody mentioned it. You do need a air compressor. So yes, the, the, the actual um, paint sprayer is cheap, but you need an air compressor. I never even thought about that because that's just something we've always had is an air compressor. I don't know what the prices are on them, but um, I mean, an air compressor is not a bad tool to have because then you can hook up all your nail guns, your staple guns, your paint sprayers, everything up to there. And it's a great tool to have. One more thing I forgot to say. I do add water to my paint sprayer. So I don't add it to the gallon, but once I pour it in the paint sprayer, I go ahead and add water. You know, I don't measure anything. I just kind of wing it. But if I had to give you a measurement, I would say probably like a fourth of a cup to this is like a quart of paint. And most likely if your paint sprayer is getting clogged, it's not because it needs to be clean, it's because you need to add more water to your paint. So once I figured that out, cause it did take me a while to figure that out, it's been smooth sailing with my spray gun. Cause I, I always think it was clogged, there was a problem. But once I started adding more water to it, it really sprayed so much better. So that is most likely your issue. Do not forget to add a little bit of water to your paint once it's in the paint sprayer. Now that the chalk paint on our baskets has dried, we're going to wet distress them. So I just have a wet rag and I'm just going to wipe them down and remove some of that white paint so you get some of that um, brown basket coming through. Now I forgot to say when I was talking about the paint sprayer, if you don't have a paint sprayer, you can get chalk paint in the spray can and just... um spray it on there i would highly recommend that instead of brushing it on because brushing it on is going to first of all take forever and it's going to make it kind of thick and you want it kind of thin so that way you can easily pull it back off unless you wanted to just leave the chalk paint on there and you weren't distressing it it but if you're not distressing it then i would use any paint like not you don't need to use chalk paint i like the chalk paint when i'm using it to distress stuff and um, you definitely don't want to use your orbital sander to distress this because you don't want the basket to start coming apart. So I'm just going to keep going around the basket until I like the way that it looks. And I'm going to do this on the other two baskets as well. The one I painted blue and pink and the one that I painted red, but I'm not going to film that. But this is, this is exactly what I'm going to do to the other ones as well.
I ended up loving the way this looks, so I did not add anything to it. I just simply distressed it. So what y'all think? How they turned out? Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite basket. And now I need to decide which ones to keep and sell. Oh, that's always the hardest part. Like I'm good until I style them. And once I style them, I'm like, oh my God, I want to keep it. Keep sale, keep sale. I don't know. <laughs> that's always the hardest decision. But if you enjoy this type of videos, y'all make sure y'all subscribe and hit the notification button. And y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching and give this video a big...